I'm Anil Kumar. I've taken a few videos to convert complex numbers in polar form or modulus argument form. Example here is the complex number z is equal to minus square root 2 plus i. Now this happens to be in which quadrant? Let's look into that first and then we'll do rest of the part. Most important is actually to figure out how to place it. So in polar form, I could say this is my real line, that's the imaginary part. So let's say i, y and the real part is x. So any complex number could be written as x plus i, y, correct? So it is minus square root 2, okay, minus square root 2 will be on the left side and uh, 1 is the real part, so, so kind of here. So what we have is this represents the complex number z, right? Where the x value is minus square root 2, the y value, imaginary y value is 1. So in Cartesian plane, we kind of write like this. We say it's modulus argument form. When we talk about polar form, we have exactly the same thing, except for we call this as a pole, let's say O. We are interested in how far is the point from O, and that is the distance R, and second component is the theta angle, right? We call this as the argument. So modulus is basically the value of R, always positive. Argument is the value of theta, which is between 0 to 360 degrees. Okay, generally we take it in radians, but we could also use degrees. Now, many of my students in grade 11 haven't learned radians yet, so they use degrees. So I'm going to use degrees in this particular case, right? So it could be in degrees or in radians and I'll use degrees for this particular example. So when we say polar form, we really want to write it as x, you can see, could be written as r cos theta now, r is the hypotenuse of this triangle, plus i r sine theta, right? Is that clear? And if you take r common, then you could write this as cos theta plus i sine theta, perfect? In polar form, we could also write this in terms of r and theta. That explains, right? So this is standard. So even if you write in coordinates r theta, we understand it is r units away and counterclockwise theta angle. It could be in degrees or radius. So I hope that part is clear to all, right? So let's find what r is. Now, if we are given in this form, which is x plus i, y, we could use these formulas. r will be equals to x square plus y square square root. So in our case, let me write formulas here. And the angle theta is ratio of sine and cosine. So we can say angle theta is equals to the y part over the x part. Is it okay? So theta inverse tan inverse of y over x is going to give us theta. Okay, so, so this is standard which we can always use. Now let's find the value of r. So r will be equals to, uh, let me rewrite the equation right here. We are saying z equals to minus square root 2 plus i, right? So the x component is minus square root 2 the y component is 1, the imaginary part. So what is r equals to? r is equal to square root of minus square root 2 whole square plus 1 square. Is it okay? So which is square root of, this square is 4 plus, I mean sorry, 2, 2, square root 2 square becomes 2, right? 2 plus 1, yeah, sorry for that. Good, we found out early. 
and this is square root 3. So r is square root 3 for us. Perfect. So we have found this value. Let's now find what theta is. As you can see, we are in quadrant 2. Theta is greater than 90 but less than 180 degrees. The idea is always to find the related acute angle. So begin with finding related acute angle. Angle. So we'll find tan alpha. Now acute angle will always give us positive value. Correct. And therefore, 1 over square root 2 will be the value. Is it okay? So we are taking positive since we are talking about a triangle here. Is it okay? So this angle is alpha for us. So that gives us alpha equals to tan inverse of 1 over square root 2. Right? So let's use calculator. Don't get confused with 45 degrees. Okay. Tan is 1 for 45 degrees. Let's find this, okay? Shift tan inverse 1 divided by square root 2 and then we close the brackets and find the angle. It is equals to 35.26 degrees. So it's a good idea to round it. We are only learning how to do all this. We'll round this to one whole number, let's say 35 degrees. Let's round it to whole numbers. 35 degrees. We know what alpha is. Now can you tell me what is theta? Alpha the acute angle is 35. Theta will be 180 degrees take away 35. Is that okay? Which is 145 degrees. Perfect. So we know theta. So now we can write in polar form the complex number minus square root 2 i as z equals to r is square root 3, right? Square root 3. Cos of 145 degrees plus sine with this is imaginary part sine of 145 degrees. Is it okay? Or as I said, you could also write this as square root 3, the distance from the pole at an angle of 145 degrees. Is it okay? So either way, you can write. I hope the steps are absolutely clear. The idea is to write in polar form means r and theta, basically. So find r using Pythagorean theorem. So we got this as square root 3. Find theta, first related acute angle, that's important. Then the actual angle. And then write down in whatever form you are using at your school. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that really helps. If you like, you can put some likes. Feel free to share my videos and write comments. Thank you and all the best.